I'd love to maybe start uh, with a quick overview of, of your background and, and your journey to founding Gong. Sure. Uh, so first, like, excited to be here. Uh, this is personally my favorite city in the U.S. Don't tell the people in San Francisco, but it, it is. Uh, and uh, especially like Gong, the, actually the idea for Gong was born in New York. I mean, you might want to know. So uh, yeah, my history, um, Gong is kind of the fourth company that I'm leading. I was one of the founding team of a company called Click Software uh, that was uh, recently acquired by Salesforce for $1.3 billion. Um, and uh, CMO and VP of sales, a company called Panaya in the ERP space, smaller outcome, quarter of a billion. I was uh, uh, for a period between like 2012 and 2015 or 14, around that time, was the CEO of, of uh, SciSense. And, uh, and Gong is the first company that I've actually founded from scratch. Always joined like free revenue, uh, but this is the, the first one that I actually founded from scratch. Um, so it's kind of like my, that's my addiction, like building companies. Um, the idea, um, sorry, go ahead, Matt. Yeah, maybe, maybe uh, just um, to, to start, uh, you know, from the sort of the very top. Um, so what, what is Gong? And then we'll talk about the idea and the why now, but um, what, what is Gong? Yeah, so, so Gong is a revenue intelligence system. Now that doesn't tell you anything. Probably the majority of the world still doesn't know what the heck it is, but it's a new kind of system that is used by a customer facing organization in uh, sales and uh, customer support to provide a layer of insider information that is like a hundred times better and bigger than what they're getting from their CRM system. How is it even possible, right? The information in CRM system is based on what the, the reps are punching in, right? They're filling in forms, like uh, how was the deal? How was the conversation? Which is like very little and obviously subjective. Gong captures information at the source. So rather than relying on that, it just monitors conversations with customers. Uh, could be emails, could be Zoom calls, phone calls, documents are being exchanged, uses natural language understanding. And this is, this is a, a data forum, so you'll understand. Essentially, it takes like a huge amount of unstructured data, which is like what people say, and extract structured data that provides insights both for the customer facing people to be better at their job, it gives people, uh, the leadership team, like insights, what's really going on and how to get better. And all of that without anybody having to do anything. So thinking like, like a self-organizing CRM. Is there a salesperson uh, dream so that you don't have to do the data entry and, uh, and sales managers don't have to uh, force you to do it or threaten you? Right. So threaten, yeah, yeah, you can do the data. Um, so what, what, what was the, um, what was the, the sort of the why now moment, like back in 2015, um, as you were thinking about, okay, I'm going to start a company, what, why that specifically at that moment? Um, I, I wasn't even thinking about starting a company. So, so when I was at SciSense, I mean, overall, we're growing pretty well, but then, uh, then we had uh, like a quarter from hell. Right or is, is I don't know if it's okay to say it like in this webinar. So like an oh shit quarter, right? Uh, it's like everything's like going up, 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 and then like shoo, like one one hell of a nosedive. And I I had no idea like what's going on. Like marketing are pointing fingers in sales. Sales is pointing fingers in marketing. Everybody's like blaming the product, and you know I'm kind of like the Switzerland in the middle. I'm trying to understand what's going on. Uh, so in my desperation, I had my uh, my operations people start to like crunch the metrics, you know, we're getting like, you know, conversion rate, do we have enough leads? Uh, we're making enough conversations, everything looked fine, uh, which obviously didn't make sense. Uh, and I had uh, my product managers actually sift through Salesforce notes and they'll dump everything in Excel and they start like reading, like, you know, go over like thousands of deals. They'll spend a couple of weeks is like, like, there's nothing there. Like, we don't know what's going on. So, um, there are some, and then it dawned on me that this is, this is pretty crazy. Like there are some fundamental questions that we don't, uh, that we're unable to answer. Um, why are some salespeople successful and others are not? Is it like bad hire? Is it our training? Is it some, is it like pure chance? 
Um, why are we not winning more deals? So Sysense uh, was and still like in the business intelligence space, which was like a, a highly competitive space, right? Uh, there are a lot of players, buyers are confused and you never really know why you're losing, even like how much you're losing to the competition or buy, because th the only way for companies to know how much they're losing is if the reps select that drop down list, like who we lost the deal to, right? And which often they don't do. And sometimes it's like more than one. So that was like the, um, then it dawned on me that, hey, like the king isn't wearing any clothes. Like this is ridiculous. This is some fundamental business questions that we can't answer. So I was looking for something that, uh, is there anything that was, that can give me like a, a better picture. Uh, I was asking actually the reps uh, to record calls and send me recordings. At that time I was commuting between Newark and Tel Aviv like every week mm -hmm. and on a flight and instead of watching movies, I would just, just <laughs> listen to conversation because I, I need to get to the bottom of it. But even that was like super time consuming. And I said, that's anecdotal. I mean, it's like, you know, I can listen to like five calls, but there are thousands, right? I don't even know that I got the right five. So. I started Googling for something that can give me automated insights from conversations. I uh, couldn't find it. And I said, um, Hey, maybe, maybe there is a, there's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then what did you do next? I always find those entrepreneurial paths to be fascinating. Like how did you, uh, how did you get started? Like um, building a prototype and all those things. How long did that take? How much sort of technical sort of product building was there to do before you had an MVP? uh it worked like it worked like pretty fast i wouldn't say it was super smooth but uh uh so first we did two things first i i found like a great co-founder uh elon who was my cto and when i was a sciences uh, at science i was interviewing him for a vp of engineering and as soon as i left i was like hey i've got this like little startup for you so we are like meeting at a coffee shop like once a week and uh trying to kind of think about the idea and we uh, we did two things. First, we um, we did a market validation. You know, mm -hmm. something often like a common mistake for founders if they think that something is a great idea that they would love to buy, right? They think that the entire world is willing to, and that's not the case. So, uh, we interviewed about fifty potential buyers and asked them, "Hey, we're looking at something that will automatically glean insights from conversations. What do you think? Uh, will you buy? How much will you willing to pay?" And the feedback was pretty positive across the those board. Those buyers were those VP of sales types or VP of sales ops or? Yeah, both. Okay. Like at that time, we didn't know the difference. Like, uh, so we, we kind of we did a pretty broad spectrum. And again, this doesn't tell you, I mean, because again, it's my fourth company. I know that they can say yes when it times to actually buying, they may still say no. It doesn't, but if everybody said no, that's a stupid idea, then uh, probably, you know, we would have been in the idea. The other things we kind of like try to understand uh, the state of the art of the technology that's available, especially like in natural language understanding, uh, speech, video. Uh, we didn't want to like spend like three years in development. We want to know what's available right now. How good is it? Um, is it? And can we deliver something today? So fortunately, we started in 2015. We're... Um, both like deep learning and um, natural language understanding just made a leap that allows to be uh, successful. I think if we started a company two years before, I'm not sure that we would have been successful. Uh, so with that, we said, okay, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's an amazing idea. Let's go and raise money. Um, it wasn't a walk in a park. I mean, today Gong is a, is a super hot company, but at that time, like we got a lot of no's. Uh, but not stupid people. Uh, there are a lot of objections, like uh, salespeople are going to hate it as, as a big brother. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and Google and Amazon will compete with you. And, you know, standard stuff. Uh, I think fortunately, because of my track record, people say that, you know, maybe we're not convinced about the horse, but the jockey is... It's okay. Uh, so we got, we raised a $6 million seed. Um, that was uh, end of October, 2015. Uh, 2016, we weren't planning on selling anything. We just wanted companies to um, kind of like start playing with a product. 
So we'll start to train the model and we get some recordings that we can start testing the models. Uh, and we found like a dozen friends and family. Sysense was one of them. We bagged them and they did us a favor. Uh, and and actually things things started to get like uh, um, better like pretty quickly, uh, which was a surprise to us. Uh, so around February or March, we saw that actually people were actually using the product more than what we've thought. And we said, okay, let's invest in a few like tweaks in the user experience and, you know, move some buttons, nothing major. And engagement started to go up. And then around uh, April or May that year, so only like four months from like a pre-alpha, you know, I was talking to Alon and says, you know what, let's do like a, like a trial close. A trial close is, is a technique in sales that you just, you just go and ask for the order and see what happens. And we wanted to ask for something that's like a non-trivial amount. I mean, not outrageous, but not $500. Right? And, and again, we just wanted to know where we stand. Like, do we have something that people uh, find valuable uh, enough that they'll pay us? So we reached out to everybody and said, um, Hey guys, sorry, uh, beta is over. Uh, it's time to pay. And it was like in the tens of thousands. And everybody kind of like balked, but 11 out of the, the, the 12 bought. <laughs> uh, and the 12 bought like a year later for a lot more. Uh, but, but it says, okay, now we have something. And so it was almost like a product market fit on, on day one, which right. was, it was like yeah. better than our expectation. And and you found that the engagement was was strong. Like, how did you navigate the social dynamics of precisely the salespeople feeling like they may be listened to by some bot? And then, what did you sell more to the decision makers or, or, or to the salespeople? How did you do that? We did both. So that was like the, the people that that had that concern. Uh, I mean, were pretty smart. It's it's a it's a legitimate. So we built actually enough in it for uh, the users themselves. Uh, that they'll be able to at least go through the past hurdle. And what we've seen consistently is that like the first like day or two may feel a little uncomfortable because now you're in this like big open space with everybody. But actually that creates a, a very positive transformation uh, within the company. If you'll say, okay, people now can help me. They could, they could watch my game. I can watch their games, right? So just like, you know, LeBron watches game tape. Yeah every day on twitch it's working for him right so uh so it, it is like uh plus now uh it makes their life a lot easier because they don't need the yellow pads you know to take all these the details notes and then put them in the salesforce they can just focus on the conversation so they're they love gong our net promoter score uh as of today is 80 80 right it's like higher than the iPhone in 2008. Yep. And most of those ratings are about, it's, it's insane for enterprise software, right? So most of our ratings um, is by the salespeople that, that absolutely love the product and can't imagine their lives without it. But it was, uh, we, had, we had to tweak the product to make it work for them. Amazing. And initially, did you um, go after startups initially as a, as a target market and... Uh... Yes. So are you still there, or have you, like, presumably you 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 gone up market to the enterprise? So yeah, initially it was like startup companies that to us like seemed like uh, big big companies at the time. We're just like five five people at the company, uh, but now definitely we have accounts in like seven figures. We have we have very large companies uh, using us, and it's it's uh, it's an important motion for us. And that actually uh, came like a lot sooner than we've uh, anticipated. I still remember my initial like seed pitch that we built kind of like a time. I said like, you know, down the road. And that was like, like in five years, we're going to start going after the enterprise. But it actually like almost on the second year, we're starting to see like uh, very large companies coming to us. Okay, um, really, really interesting. Um, maybe let's talk about the, the product a bit more and I can go into like how that works. Like, so presumably there is an ingestion layer of some sort where you get data. So you, you started with voice, but you, you, do, you cover other sources as well, right? 
Right, right. Uh, yeah. How does ingestion work? Or so, so the product, yeah, there, there's an ingestion layer. So uh, there are probably like um, right now about a, a hundred systems that we support. And then they're like every couple of weeks we're adding more. Um, tomorrow, by the way, we have uh, our, our Celebrate um, event. I'm shameless blog. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, um, what, when is it? Uh, tomorrow. It's like a all day uh, start, like morning San Francisco time. Uh, okay. Anybody can go to... Uh... Gong.io yeah, celebrate .gong .io. and register. Yeah, celebrate.gong.io. And we're announcing integration with, with Slack, uh, with Zoom. Uh, Zoom, we always had integration, but now it's like tighter. It, it builds into the native API. But anything from all the web conferencing, um, Zoom, uh, WebEx, uh, Google Meet, Amazon Chime, whatever you're using, uh, Microsoft Teams, obviously. Uh, most of the telephony systems, uh, cell phones, and then like email, either like Google or Office 365, Exchange, uh, writing text messages. Um, so ultimately, our vision is to get to like anything that communicates with the customer. It could be like uh, contracts, proposals, uh, anything. But we started with voice because um, it is a very rich data source uh, that was still not done by anyone in a, in a, in a very good way. And for emails, we knew that we could get to it, but there's a little less information and there are other solutions that did it. So we didn't want a, our, uh, our um, initial entry to be based on something that isn't difficult and um, doesn't provide as much value. So yeah, once we ingest, uh, each one of them um, is getting mined for information that is like uh, specific to, to that media um, and you might think that they're all the same, right? But even like um, conversational language is very different from uh, um, written language, very different from chat, right? If you think about Slack messages, like very short, they have emojis, emails, usually like well-written, proper English, um, conversational. It's very hard to like even like determine if something is a question or a statement or uh, people don't follow correct grammar. Uh, so almost like different uh, processing for every uh, every type of media. But then Gong uh, parses uh, anything from which topics were discussed, what are the action items, questions. Um, competitors, uh, objections, all the things that are pertinent to customer facing applications. Uh, and then there's a higher order analytics on top that you could compare people. Um, for example, at one of our customers, I'll just use an example. Uh, they're selling point of sale equipment to restaurants, right? Uh, and their solution has, um, an iPad component and an application, right? That it's for reservations or managing tables or whatever that is. And Gong recommended that they actually, when they present their solution, they bring the iPad before they discuss the application. Mm -hmm. right? Now, the beauty of it, Gong doesn't understand their business. It doesn't even know what an iPad is, but it just saw that what the top 5% sellers are doing is they bring the iPad before they talk about the solution, and then it trains the entire uh, the entire team to do the same thing, which increased win rate by fifteen percent. <laughs> so ingestions, natural language understanding, and then there are three applications on top. One is like people intelligence, determining uh, differences between people, right, and then like leveling them up all the time. Uh, Deal intelligence. Me meaning meaning the, the people on the customer side or on your, on your, your, your own team? Your own your team. team. Like, so who's performing better or who's, uh, how do you, how do you get Yeah, it? well, you kind of know who's performing better, right? Yeah. What you don't know that, we knew that even in sizes, right? We just don't know why, right? So what are the difference in behaviors that might explain some of those differences, right? And what are the best practices? Uh, Deal intelligence, look at all of your pipeline and tells like which, customers and deals are likely to close, which one are progressing according to Gong. Uh, for example, if the deal is like 30 days from closing, right? But still 
there was no discussion of pricing like whatsoever on any of the channels, like on, on emails or in one of the calls that deals is a high risk, right? Or um, if they're not talking like uh, high enough in your organization, so Gong tracks with email, who are you talking to? How many people are engaged? How, in, how responses of the customers, all those signals. So it does measure your pipeline better than any traditional pipeline management. And the third is market intelligence, gives you a kind of higher order, you know, how much are you losing to competitors? What do people like about your um, solution? How did they respond to new pricing? All those things, very popular, but not just by sales team, but also with product and marketing team, gives them like great input about the, uh, the product. Mm -hmm. That's great. And then the, the NLP, NLU engine at the core, um, how much of it was, uh, developing your own algorithms and doing some like AI research um, as opposed to using existing stuff, but just like fitting it a lot of data. Uh, today is pretty much uh, our own. I think uh, we're probably using some open source. It's not that everything was developed from scratch. Uh, when we did start, and this is probably like important letter, uh, lesson for entrepreneur, uh, we did not have our own speech engine, right? Even though it was key, we uh, we use some kind of cloud-based solution that, that was like not great, but okay. Um, and uh, that was with the seed money. We did not want to burn like $2 million on developing our own technology. The, the, most, the biggest risk for customers is not find a, a product that people want to buy and pay for, right? So we wanted to create like the experience. We want to know what the application is. And only after we raised the Series A, we developed our own that, that provide like higher accuracy, uh, better uh, lowered the cogs. So we had like better margins. Uh, so, but the, the first thing was to find something that people love and willing to pay for that love. Interesting. And how did that um, translate in terms of team? So for a company where AI is so central to the, to the product, uh, did you have uh, like deep AI researchers like day one or you started bringing them in precisely when you started building your own product, your own? When we started building our own. So the first is more an application that we, you know, can we create like a good enough experience, something just, uh, I mean, use MVP. My partner Lonnie calls like MWP, like minimal wowable product, right? People says, oh, wow, right? So we had that. And and nobody complains about like the accuracy and all of that just but then we have we actually have uh we have a real research team like a lot of people like r d means engineering at gong no we have like uh about a dozen researcher i mean the entire r d is a is hundred people right so it's like 10 12 percent it's a submission event they work on real long-term research projects some of them like don't succeed and that that's okay. Uh, so we, we are taking risk and they're, they're always thinking like a year or two ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, so there is a real team for speech alone. I think there's, it's outside of research, but we have uh, four or five people working just on that. Yeah. So how, did you, how did you recruit them? Uh, is that, are you now able to recruit them? Because as you said, you're a hot company with a lot of traction and they're working on interesting problems. We were able to recruit them before we were, um, hot. Uh, I think that one of the things when Elon and I started, remember we did we did a, a survey of both like the market, what people buy, but also the technology, and we interviewed a lot of people, right? Pretty much. Uh, so we started a company in Israel, and I, I don't know if everybody knows, but uh, uh, the, the R and D is based in Israel, and uh, and we pretty much went to companies who did like similar speech technology in the past for, for different applications. So we kind of like mapped everybody in the market and we started like knowing like who's good and and once uh these people kind of know each other so it's a network so once you hire like one or two odds are that they can bring their their friends and that's how we, we started building so the team was built um organically but we made it a point to really know everybody in that kind of like narrow community mm -hmm. And do you encourage them to publish as well? Yeah, they're publishing. They're publishing research. I mean, I don't know that I encourage, but we definitely don't stop them if they have motivation. That they speak in conferences, like uh, yeah, definitely they publish articles. And uh, are, are you, is the product structured in a way that um, 
the AI learns across all customers? How do you, how do you think about that? Uh, yeah, some of it is across all customers and some of it is customer specific. So what's unique about Gong is that, um, is, is our audience, right? They're not, they're not uh, data scientists, right? These are like salespeople or sales leaders. I mean, they love the insights, but they're not gonna do anything. They're not gonna crunch numbers, most of them. So we couldn't rely on anything. That's why uh, the learning is unsupervised, right? It means that we were not asking people to label or train the system. It, it just, the, the, you turn it on and it's working. So everything that we do has to be like fully automated without human intervention. Um, so, so as you get into a new company, uh, Gong will start, uh, obviously first I can say the words, right? That gets better over time. So words like competitor names or product names, the system starts to learn, uh, if this isn't repeated enough. Um, fortunately we have the emails as well. So that's a good training set because we know that some, some of the words are, are unique. That company, even a name like Sysons, right? It's, it's hard right? Uh, or gong could be like an object or a company, right? So that varies by company. So that's on the speech level. Then there's the topics, right? Uh, so uh, there, there are generic universal topics like pricing or, or next steps or uh, even small talk, right? If gong kind of like recognized across all the customer, he said, okay, this part of the conversation is a small talk, right? We could be talking about the Lakers game, or we could be talking like the weather in New York or the air quality in San Francisco, right? It's, it's not easy problem, but mm -hmm. that don't learn across all customers. And then there are like company specific things that it learns once it's had like a good number of conversations. Um, so for, for Gong, uh, privacy is something that we get asked about. Even like Big Brother, right? It's, it's, a, it's a common question. So it'll start to learn the things that are unique to Gong. And if you want to create like deep insights, um, it has to be company uh, specific. Okay. That makes perfect sense. So what's, um, what's on the roadmap? What are you guys working on now? So you, you, you raised um, a large round, of, I believe like a 200 million Series D just, that was announced just uh, a few weeks ago. Congr congratulations on that. I had a reported uh, 2.2 billion valuation. So making uh, you guys a, uh, a unicorn. Um, so um, all of this is very exciting. So what, what, what are you gonna do with, uh, with the money? Is that uh, sort of like global go-to-market expansion or is it more product? What's the plan? I think about buying a few islands in Greece and make <laughs> In office, uh, I, I'm, I'm I'm available if you need somebody to visit. Yeah, uh, the money is there. Uh, I think we we didn't need the money. In fact, we we raised like a, a 65 million Series C from Sequoia in December, and we still haven't touched that money. So that uh, it's just there. It's just prudent on on companies or CEOs to recruit when they can. Uh, mm. the, the market is good. So it's there for, for two reasons. First, to kind of be for emergency, like in case like, you know, the word turns on us or who knows, like what's going on right now. So it's always good to have it there, uh, potentially to make acquisitions uh, when the opportunity, so it does allow you to do uh, several things and give you some some margin for error, right? If things don't go as well as we hope. But uh, the plan is to, I mean, this should get us like well beyond an IPO. Like that, that's the path for, uh, for Gong, like within like um, a few years. So now we don't need to worry about uh, money. We are spending heavily on R&D. So I mentioned we have about 110 people in R&D right now. We're, we're doubling that next year um, or in the next 12 months, even before next year. Um, and are you guys global? Uh, does, does the AI work in all languages and so on and so forth? does it does not as well uh still as as, as kind of like american right so that's like uh english but but it will uh we're not we haven't expanded globally yet more for a marketing reason than for things because we want to like create more uh resonance in a smaller echo chamber or, or a big echo chamber like in new york and san francisco versus like spread yourself in multiple countries but once we get the momentum going uh Probably next year we'll start expanding into other countries. Great. So maybe one last uh, question or theme from me, and then we'll open it up to to some uh, Q and A from the audience. Um, 
The theme of uh, category, category creation is very interesting. So uh, there's like this whole conversation around revenue, intelligence. Um, how, do you, how do you go about that? And you know, how could other founders or teams that may listen to this, uh, how could they you know, learn from your experience? Yeah, I mean, this, this is uh, strategic. So the first thing you need to know, like, what game are you in? There, uh, either you're an existing category, and then the, the, the thing is, like, differentiation and, and standing just above the crowd. Like, uh, BI, for example, like, the previous company I managed, that was it. it like, people want to buy, right? So uh, they, have, they have budgets, and you just do need to explain what you need to do. Uh, you and not the other guys, right? That's it. Uh, so I need to hear about you, and I need to see. Category is kind of, it's more complicated. It has advantages, like it's very, there's very little competition, right? But, um, and you could get people to buy, but if you want the market to evolve, you've got to become a must have, right? So the line items in budget exist, right? Uh, and it's one thing, I mean, you could, you could grow like pretty quickly. If you're telling for like $1,000, it's not, it's not a big deal. You don't need to worry about this, but if, if you want to get to like seven and eight figures, it doesn't just happen. So you need to educate the market. This is something that you must have. Um, why? What are the benefits? Why is it a game changer for your organization? Uh, for the more uh, conservative uh, type of buyers uh, for CFOs. And that, that, that takes time. Uh, you can't fully control it uh, you, you know you can't do it in six months it's right you know like, like pregnancy right it does take time you can accelerate it some more and it can like a better or worse job you can influence it substantially uh but it is if you're not thing that you're not replacing something or not competing with something then this is your strategic it does take time it does require requires money as well And, and, and in terms of uh, sort of like concrete steps around that, like what do you do? You, you create a conference around it. You create uh, content like a podcast, um, or you how do you how do you just say okay, this is our category? Um, I think that first you, you can't really create a category, a category, right? Just technically, you can you can help it happen, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's got to be genuine. It's got to be uh, it's the fundamental. There are a few companies that have done it. You got to create like a great product that get people like passionate about it. and you start with a small circle of people that would um, advocate for your product right that's like at the core without it nothing happens right just and and start growing it's kind of like a fire uh yeah conference can help but if, if i just do a conference like uh that doesn't uh doesn't do it it's one of those things there needs to be like the full story a product that solves a problem People that are super excited, it might be a small group initially, and that, that's fine, right? You don't need the entire world. Just just, uh, uh, just preach the converts, right? Not the atheists, right? And, and, uh, and grow it over time. You need to, to have like a story. I need to understand people why this is like a, a big deal. Um, it's important both for investors and the, the buyer uh, community. Uh, there's a, actually a pretty good book uh, by uh, Anthony Canada. He was uh, he was the uh, VP of marketing with, uh, at Gainsight that have done like a pretty good job. So I think he explains it way better than I am. But uh, I mean, those are like techniques that can help you. But get something that people don't just say is good. All right, this is a good product. You need to have like an amazing product. Mm -hmm. Right, that. that can create, uh, that is enough power to create a fire. Great, wonderful. All right, Jack, let's- uh, All right. Folks have some questions. Yeah, we've got some, we've got some great questions. We've got a few more minutes here to, to um, answer some of these. So um, a couple questions around uh, your comment about Gong being you know, an advanced CRM. In that uh, world, how do you differentiate, differentiate from a tool like Salesforce and, and is Salesforce even necessary? Yeah, that's a great question. And we refer to CRM because that, that's what people understand. That Gong actually does not replace CRM. It's a new system. Just like CRM did not replace ERP, but nobody thinks about managing customers with an ERP today. So it's a new kind of system. CRM is a system of record. It's still like who your customers are, what your, um, you know, what's their contract, uh, maybe your contacts, and it's, it's a database. 
uh, it doesn't tell you what's really going on uh, with your market or your customers unless people put in, right? Gong is an autonomous system. It's a self-driving system that helps you manage your customers like a hundred times better right. than those forms. Great. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, so this one from Dave. Uh, firstly, thanks for the session. Really enjoyable. You mentioned you sold to enterprise customers earlier than you'd thought you would have. Can you give a bit more detail as to how you landed these first large enterprises, inbound, outbound, previous relationships, et cetera? Um, it, was, it was actually inbound. Uh, it was inbound. They came to us. Uh, so the first, uh, first customers were uh, LinkedIn, right? Uh, that they, They're interested. It's someone I knew from a previous relationship, and they told me they're, they like to play with new technologies. And, uh, you know, we said, okay, that sounds great. And now they have, like, thousands of people on that. And then with another one, which I, I can't mention in public, but they're, they have, like, several thousands of people. And, again, they're intrigued. Uh, they tested the software. Uh, they loved it. They prepared like a very meticulous uh, POC with metrics and all of that. And following that, a successful POC, they they bought. And you know, they've been a customer for three years now, or maybe four. That's great. Thank you. Yeah. Another question from Sherry. Um, how have you addressed training the team on best practices learned? For example, the, the iPad lesson and others that might be more complicated. Uh, I'm, I'm guessing that the question, how does Gong train uh, the system? We focus on things that are um, kind of like easy to train. Uh, you know, the system can't, or at least we don't know how to teach you how to be funny or uh, how to tell right. you. So it is simple changes that are very easy to train and easy to detect and are pretty deterministic. So um, what should your call uh, sequence be or who to reach out to the organization? You can tell you're speaking with the wrong person, you have to reach out to this. So there, those are things that are very, uh, very easy. Um, for example, one of our customers found that there, uh, it's a big brand and they found that there is a big, uh, and part of the presentation was that they, they speak about who they are as a company and Gong found if you go over like two minutes, uh, up until two minutes, okay, but after there's a huge drop in conversion rate, right? Mm. And found that actually the younger reps uh, tend to talk more about the brand, which is ridiculous, right? You don't need to tell like who you are. People already <laughs> know. But maybe, I mean, we don't know why it's a correlation, right? Not causation, maybe because they're not as secure, so they're leaning on the power of the brand versus like having a real combo. Yep. So. It's the, it's the topics you discuss, the actions, the interaction. Are you being a good listener or not a good listener? It's things that are very easy to, to, uh, to train. That's great. Appreciate it. Um, all right. So another question here. Uh, what machine learning framework do you use and what motivated that decision? I have no idea. I have to put ignorance here, but uh, I could... I could that's all right. We can, we can follow up if, if, if needed. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, we'll move on. Um, let's see. Uh, one other question. So another question from Alan, similar to the uh, question about early enterprise customers, but can you talk a little bit more about how you got your first beta customers? Were you targeting companies that were using certain tools already? And how long did it take you to convince them of the effectiveness? Yeah, I mean, just like all start, you, you you know, you beg, steal, and bribe. Just, just that's what you do. You just uh, call companies from networks, beg them, they'll, and they'll do you a favor. I mean, that's like, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I mean, like anything intelligent to say, just, just, just find people that you know or use your network, um, and and they'll do you a favor. Awesome. All right, maybe one more, Matt. This one actually might be a good segue. Is that our, that, that sound good? Yeah. That's great. Awesome. So this one, I apologize. I'm, I'm probably going to mispronounce your name. Div Yanch uh, asks, would love to know Amit's thoughts on what PsySense did differently to almost create a mafia of sorts with uh, some ex-employees starting Gong, Firebolt, um, and upcoming, uh, anything special, uh, special sauce. And we're going to hear more about PsySense from, from Ashley, but. I'd love to Firebolt, hear Firebase, right? Presumably. Fire, Firebase, yeah, maybe Firebolt. It's also a cool company name. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure that I understand the question. Like, what did Sisons do for Gong? Oh, I think the, the question is there's a lot of great companies coming from 
uh, ex size sense employees. Uh, alumni. Which, uh, yeah. Alumni. It's a great company, great, great company, great culture and great people. And we hire well and you, uh, help people then, uh, you know, that's what happens. Like, uh, you've got good, uh, genealogy. That's yeah. great. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Very. All right. We have, uh, we're good on questions, right? Yeah, yeah. We're all set on questions and I can, uh, we can close out here and then I'll promote Ashley. All right. Well, Amit, thank you so much uh, for sharing all of this uh, candidly and the journey and all the things. And, you know, congratulations on uh, everything so far. Uh, you know, it would be an understatement to to say that we keep hearing great things about Gong, you know, across our portfolio at First Mark, a bunch of companies are, are using the product and there's a lot of very happy customers out there. So uh, congratulations on all of this and uh, thanks very much for coming back to the data-driven uh, NYC family and, and, and sharing the story. Excellent. Well, thanks for having me.